Welcome, I'm uh, Kurt Bell, your SharePoint project manager for today, and uh, welcome back to our SharePoint training. Uh, in this particular lesson series, we're talking about tools related to SharePoint online project management. So our toolkit is all located out in the Office 365 cloud in the SharePoint infrastructure, where we create a single site for every one of our projects. There are two series of courses associated with these lessons. The first series is about tools, and that's what this one is. The second series is about process. In the course of going through today's lesson, you'll be seeing a little bit about our process, which is a 10-step process, and I'll talk a little bit about it. But there'll be another video series where we'll cover those process steps in, in detail and actually go through role-playing to actually flesh out uh, a project. However, in this lesson, I'm also going to use the idea of fleshing out a project as well because um, it helps to illustrate how we can use some of the tools. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch to the screen. And uh, you can see, oh, there's a chair right over here. Come on in. Thanks. Welcome. Um, and by the way, uh, everybody, next week I'll be moving to a bigger room. So we'll be in the think tank room for obvious reasons. So, um, and uh, great. And we do have people on Skype as well. So thank you for joining us on Skype. So you're, what you're looking right here on the screen, these are the uh, lessons in this particular series, and these are all the tools. And there are 13 lessons total, covering everything from introduction to SharePoint. Hello, come on in. Oh no, this is the place. Come on in. We saved a seat for you right over here. I'm glad you brought your lunch. See, everybody dig in. <laughs> Great. So um, these are the lessons that are in the series. There are 13 lessons in total. I'm finding sometimes it takes me more than a single hour to cover one of these. We'll see how that works out. We've already covered, you're coming in third, this is the third lesson in. The first lesson, anything that's got a highlight on it, a hyperlink, that means you can click on it and watch the video. So if you click on that first one, the SharePoint tool, that opens up the video in YouTube and you can see the entire what was that, about a 55 minute lesson. There's me talking again, okay. And you can catch up. So if you wanna catch up with where you, we, we were so far, please let me know and I'll send you a link to the site. <coughs> Second lesson was, so the first lesson was explaining this whole thing, what we're doing in SharePoint, what SharePoint is, what a site collection is, what sites are, and why you can use a site as a project manager. That was the first lesson. The second lesson was, requesting a SharePoint site. So maybe you attended the first lesson and you said, hey, I kind of like that, I want a site too. And then we taught you how to come see me and I will help you, I'll answer a few questions, ask, ask you a few questions, spin up a site for you, give you the keys and you're off and running. Now once you have the keys to your SharePoint site, that doesn't necessarily mean you know how to use it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but I spent a lot of time building these tools. That's what these lessons are for. So this thir third one here is project timeline and milestones. That's what we're gonna cover here. Preparing a list of project phases, milestones, and tasks. And to that end, I just briefly need to explain, because we have a lot of new faces in here, just gonna back up a moment, back up a little bit of cover of lesson one and two. Does everybody know what SharePoint is? No, nope, I'm seeing some shaking heads. That's good, that's fine. I didn't know what it was at first either, and I was a project manager for this. They signed, you're a project manager, you're gonna do the SharePoint thing. And I go, what's a SharePoint? <laughs> SharePoint, think websites. Think corporate websites. Think websites that you can use for a variety of different purposes. Um, when you have a website for your own personal need on the internet, you have a website for a, a particular venture or something like that, you can create a corporate website, uh, a website for your nonprofit, whatever it is. With SharePoint, that gives us the ability to create sites as needed for a variety of different purposes. Microsoft gives us some very specific canned templates that we can use, but they're not very comprehensive and they're not very robust. Um, However, it gives us the tools as well to, to round those out and make them what we want. What we have here is a toolkit that we developed over the last four years to basically meet the need of project management here at RCIT. The scope of this is really RCIT. I'm, I'm glad there's other people from other, outside of RCIT that are here because you're welcome to use it as well. But the scope of it really is for this particular organization. So with that, that's what SharePoint is and you can have one too like I said. Now, I went ahead and created a SharePoint site for this particular lesson. And we're gonna use this site for all of the 13 or the remaining 12 uh, or 11 lessons in this particular series. And it kind of, if you look at this, it kind of looks like just a website, right? 
What kind of artifacts do you see? You see that it's got a URL, it's got a title, it's got something here that looks like a line with today in it, it's got some items down here. It's all empty. There's nothing in here really right now, but except for a few key documents that we created and put in there. If you were to come to me and ask for a SharePoint site and I asked you those few questions and spun up your site and gave you the keys, that's what you'd have to start with. It's its own little universe. You can do anything in here and you can't break anything. You can't mess up the county systems. You can't do anything. You could, you could possibly share information inadvertently, so be careful about what you share, but you can't break anything. So feel free to mess with the, toy, the tools all you like, okay? And if you break something, see me. I can probably help you fix it. Now, just something that says sample project site isn't very helpful. So we're going to go ahead and kind of invent a project right now that we can um, begin to work on. And that project, we will then use the various tools. All of these items down the list here, these are all the tools that we've created over the years. And so for that matter, I'm going to ask for a volunteer. <coughs> hint, hint, volunteer. Oh, Juan. Oh. Thank you for volunteering, Juan. There's no money exchanged in this. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm looking for, we're going we're gonna to have a little fun with this. We're, gonna, we're gonna, going, to, going to take a band. They've decided there's some band that's going to take a world tour, and we're taking them on the road. We've been given the project of taking this band on the world tour. Now, look, if you look at Juan, he's a pretty eclectic looking guy. <laughs> I asked him to pick a band. Uh, he said, does it have to be one that anybody knows? And I said, I pick anything. So I don't know what we're going to get. What do you? Oingo, boingo. Oingo, boingo. I already see a problem with that because I can't spell it, but you'll help me. <laughs> oingo, boingo. So tell me a little bit. Oingo, boingo has been around for come some decades, right? Uh, 80 span, based out of LA. Very, yeah, very, very 80 span. Are they still touring? No, but uh, one of the main members, Danny Elfman, has gone on to do a lot of music for uh, various film scores. Well, guess what? They're going back on the road. Okay. And they came to us to help us plan their tour. Now, Oingo Boingo being an 80s band, it's not probably not like, you know, um, you know, like uh, a modern band. They don't need the same venue. It'll probably be a smaller smaller range, but they're still very popular. I mean, everybody knows yeah, them. Yeah, they cut records, they cut out. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to open the hood on this project, go inside and make some changes. We're gonna need to change the title from sample project to site to something to describe this particular project. So as the site owner, when I give you the keys, you are, there's different permissions level. You will be the site owner. That means you can do these things. The people that become members of your site, they cannot do these things, okay? So we're gonna go over here, hopefully you can see. Is it big enough for everybody to see? <coughs> Let me make it a little bit bigger. Over here, there's a cog wheel. If I click on this cog wheel, and remember, only the site owners can do this, and then go down to site settings, your users won't have this. Here are a list of, uh, this is your control console for your SharePoint site. Remember, you're not, you can mess with anything in here and you're not affecting anything anywhere else in the SharePoint universe. You're just affecting your site. Can anyone see anything that might give us a change the title? A little small. There's categories up there. Look and feel. Under look and feel, there's, yeah, title, description, and logo. Right. So let's go ahead and click on that. We're going to, there it is, sample project site. So. Okay, I'm going to try to butcher this, see, see if I can get this right. Boingo, boingo. You got the second one right, just chop the B off on the front, you're good. Chop the what, what off? Uh, on the, the first one. So oh. it's, it's spelled just like the other one, but with, without a B. Oh. I forgot an N, O-I-N. So O-I-N, oing, go, boingo. Like that? Yep. I've got it? Great. So this is not just Oingo Boingo. This is, what is the project we're doing? What is Oingo Boingo about to do? World Tour. World Tour, yeah. World, World, World Tour 2020. Okay, they're going to do this next year. So we've got a head start. So we've got all of 2019 to get ready for this thing, right? Okay, let's change the uh, description. And the description is important when I give you your site. You'll want to think carefully about this. And we have a dashboard for this. And our project sponsors, our executives in this organization, can hover their cursor over the dashboard. And whatever you type here pops up. And it says, oh, because they're like, what is this Oingo Boingo World Tour thing? And they hover over and it says the following. What does it say, Juan? Uh, back to the 80s retro. Back to the 80s uh, retro tour? Retro World Tour. Retro World 
tour. Okay, great. So one sentence, you know, busy executives, they don't have time to read a paragraph. They got it. Okay, good. We've just changed our site title and a description for our executives. You could change the logo, but we don't want to. And there we go. Let's go ahead and click on OK. Now let's see. Did it change? There we go. Wango Boingo World Tour 2020. Okay. <clears throat> Time to roll up our sleeves. I'm a literalist. A literalist and we're going to get busy with this thing. Yeah, David, you can roll them up too. It's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So now the first thing we want to look at here is this particular purpose of this particular lesson is we're talking about two things in mainly the timeline. That's this thing right up here, and the milestones. Okay. We've got 45 minutes, 46 minutes left. All right. And we're going to talk about those two things. We may not need all of that time. If we're lucky, we'll actually dovetail a little into the next lesson. So right now we see the timeline. There's nothing. All right. Nothing is. On there so we're gonna need to start adding some things to this to this to this project now has anybody ever here ever managed a, a, a group in a is in a past life Omar I'm looking at you yes you have you've managed a group Yes. Wow okay well you're gonna be our mentor and guide have you actually taken a group group on the road no not on the road it's not a group like a Project group. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> not a bad group, though. No. Okay, not like that. All right. Okay. All right. Not bad. Okay, so this is new to all of us. We don't. None of us know how to do this, right? We're just going to be guessing, and guessing is okay. Or it'll be fun. Okay. So the first thing is right over here. Do you see this? This empty timeline matches this empty list right here. This is your milestones list, and there's nothing in there right now. We can click on this new task thing right here to start fleshing things out. But don't worry, we're here to help, okay? The list here only shows you things that actually have a date on them and that are not complete. We actually have a number of steps that are already listed in your timeline, but they don't have dates on them, so they're not showing up here. The way that you can see that is there's a link over here called Milestones. If you click on Milestones, it's gonna show us the timeline plus a series of steps. Now, I told you before that there's two series of these classes, tools and process. Tuesdays are for tools, Thursdays are for process. That's the process right there. You're seeing four phases and ten steps. One of the things we're trying to do with, by introducing this methodology is we're trying to introduce a standardized life cycle to every project. We want every project to be just like, I don't know how many of your parents out there, just like when you're telling a story to your kids, your, when you're little ones, right? They don't like it if you start in the middle. And they ain't going to be happy if you finish in the middle either unless they fall asleep. They want a good starting, they want a good middle, and they want a happy ending. And we're trying to deliver happy endings in all cases, right? And a good happy ending means proper closure of the project. Closure for a kid simply means that, you know, the, the, the ogre is banished and the prince and the princess live happily ever after. Proper project closure for our sponsors means they got what we promised them at the beginning and they got it on time and to specification and within budget. That's what this is all about. So these 10 steps guide us through that process, all right? There's four phases pre-project evaluation phase. That's where we're doing all the upfront due diligence of figuring out just what this thing is. We don't even know if it's gonna be a project yet. I mean, I'm sure lots of you have had things that have shown up at your desk that don't turn out to be projects after all, right? This is where we do that work to figure it out. Following the pre-project evaluation phase is the planning phase, which begins interestingly with project start. Huh? Why isn't that up way up here? Well, because we may not have a project that we need to determine, right? So in this methodology, the project does not begin until we have agreement between the customer and us that we're really going to do this. Let's take our, our, our example with the band, Oingo Boingo, right? <clears throat> maybe how many members are in Oingo Boingo? It's like five. Five, okay. So maybe the five, this idea maybe came up from the Oingo Boingo and maybe they got together in Newport Beach or something like that and had a nice dinner together with the band and they said, you know, guys, are there any, any women in the band? No. no. Okay, you know, guys, wouldn't they, are they British? No. Okay, American accent. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, guys, wouldn't it be great? We, this has been so much fun. Let's get the band together. Yeah, let's get the band together. Let's, let's find somebody to help us organize this, right? So they contact us. 
We're going to get to be on the World Tour 2020. And we do this pre-project evaluation bit, and we come back to them afterwards and say, this is a great idea. Here's what this looks like, right? This animal looks like. And they're going, really? Oh, forget that. We don't want this to happen. And they cancel the whole idea. That's what happens in this pre-project evaluation stage. It actually becomes a project, or it, becomes, it gets filed in not going to do. And there's a third option. Does anybody want to venture a guess what the third option might be? Not For, now. Not now, it could be, that's, that's indeed, that's a fourth one. Fourth one, it could be just shelve it, right? But there's even another one. There's, there's project, not project, not now, or... Could it be like a portion of the project? Uh, do a portion of it, or what if the Oingo Boingo simply says, oh, we don't need you guys, we'll do it all ourselves. <laughs> right, we're just, we're not gonna run it through this methodology, we're just gonna wing it, right? Wing it basically means, we call that in our organization, we call that an initiative. Right, so it comes in, you got a piece of work right here, you look at it and you go, what is it, a project? Mm, are we gonna do it now, are we gonna do it now? It's not really a project, let's just give it to this supervisor over here and you can take care of this with your team, however you see fit. <laughs> not everything's a project. That's important, right? We have a lot of competent and capable people in this organization and their teams that are well able to run particular things without running them through this entire life cycle. This life cycle is used when the management, at the management level, they look at this thing and they say, yeah, we want to do this. And yeah, it's a project and we're going to run it by this methodology. We're looking for someone that knows how to use this methodology. You know, oh, you know how to use it. We're going to give you a site, take this, run it through this process. Boingo, boingo, at the end of our pre-evaluation phase, say, we like this, we want to do this. Here, go ahead, and they give us the green light, and we have a handshake, and we're off to the races. Project start. It's more than a handshake. After this, after the project, at the point of project start, you're actually, um, you're on your way towards the signature, but not quite yet. Okay, so that's the evaluation phase. And if we do our job right, we get our sponsors to let us hold off, right? If we're working with Oingo Boingo and they're really excited, we're gonna go, we're gonna go there 2020, and they, they will say, okay, we're ready. You project managers, get busy planning the project. We're gonna start hiring all the roadies. <laughs> right? Well, hold on, right? We don't want you to hire any roadies or book any dates or you know buy a jet, you know, or whatever you're gonna do. Isn't that isn't it Motley Crew that has the jet? <laughs> I think they do, yeah. And, and or do any of that stuff until we actually know we're gonna make this a project. Now in our organization, that's an uphill battle, right? Because sometimes things come in, pieces of work come in, and the teams start going right away, and us project managers are, are like trying to catch up, and we're, we're racing along trying to do our documentation, and meanwhile, they're building stuff, right? Whew. So anyway, next part here, planning phase. Okay, now we know it's a real project, then we lay out the project plan. I haven't really even explained what the business case and the project proposal are yet. Those are, what, those are two sides of the coin where we identify the problem we want to solve. That's the business case. And then we come up with one or more solutions to that potential problem. That's the project proposal. We pick a solution. And then in the plan, we lay out all the gory details about how we're going to execute that plan. And all of those three steps are contained in a single document called the phase project charter. And once we get through that piece, we get signatures on the line, we have a contract in effect, and we're off to the races. Then we have, hey, look at this, halfway through the thing, we have a kickoff meeting. <laughs> the kickoff meeting doesn't happen until we identify the problem, we've decided upon the solution, we know, we know for the most part what, we're, what it takes to do that solution, and then we bring everybody to, into a meeting room together and say, here we go. <laughs> You know, if we were going to, if we were Vikings that were going to invade an island somewhere, we would, we would, we wouldn't bring the team together until we knew we were actually going to invade and what that was going to constitute. Where am I coming up with these analogies? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't inf any, offend anyone from the Norse of Norse heritage, so, or anybody that's a Motley Crue fan. So, okay, I like Motley Crue. Okay, and now we have a project schedule. Okay, because now it's interesting that the schedule comes after the meeting. That's deliberate. Okay, I tried a couple of times to have the kickoff meeting where I introduced the schedule to the team because sometimes the, the kickoff meeting is where you're bringing everybody into the thing, right? And that doesn't go so well because there's always somebody that wasn't in, did, what, didn't have a part in the schedule that says, hey, no, 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 that's not going to take that much time. It's going to take a different amount of time, right? So the schedule comes after we bring the team together. We have a rough idea of levels of effort, rough idea of the schedule, but the formal schedule follows after everybody that's involved has their say. Okay, we'll know, we'll know roughly what we're doing, but it'll, it'll tune us. 
And then finally down to the planning review phase, you notice every one of these has a review phase. The review phase is where the project manager or managers get together and say, did we do everything to pass through the next gate into the next level? Right? That's the way we make sure we complete everything. So if Juan and I are on a project together, this last bit here, Juan and I would sit down together and ask ourselves, do we complete everything? Right? And then finally the closure phase, oh, that's probably the most important part second to the plan, to the pre-project planning phase. And that is where you get the customer to agree that you indeed delivered everything you expected to be. In our Motley, in our, in our Oingo Boingo example, the closure phase would be at the end of the tour, we meet with Wango Boingo, we go over the, con the deliverables, maybe there were 25 deliverables in, the, in this agreement, and we go through them one by one with the band, trying to keep them from you know, turning back too much whiskey too fast, okay? Think, guys, focus, focus. Do you agree we gave you all 25 items? And they go, and yes, we did. Great, party's on, okay, we're done, we're done. This has an amazing effect on projects. I've done this so many times now, where if you can get all the sponsors in the room nodding their head, yeah, you gave me everything you promised you'd give me. Yeah, we're all done. They don't come back. They think it's done. They don't they stop calling. They come back later when they want more, but they want it as another project. They don't think you forgot something. And we cover that in a very last piece down here, this post-project activities. I'll explain more about that later. During the course of the project, people are gonna show up with stuff that they want that wasn't part of this. It's okay, we got a place for it, right? And yeah, yeah, that's good. We, we know that you also wanna add another tour, another, you also wanna visit, you know, you know Beijing as well, as it wasn't on the list. Okay, but maybe we can't do that in this time, but we'll add it to the post-project activities or something, the next tour, okay. Sorry for the long preamble, we have 35 minutes left. Now it's time to start getting into the meat of what we came here for. So this is our list of all the milestones, all right? The way that you use this, right off the bat, is you start opening things up, laying out a description about them, and assigning the work to the people that are going to do the work. You'll notice over here, on the right side, there are several columns here. And in SharePoint, the term column is very important in SharePoint. Columns refer to these literal columns of information, and they're unlimited. You can have, there's a lot of canned ones, but you can have any kind of column you want. These are just the ones we think you're going to most likely need. SharePoint is very intelligent in its sorting ability. It's able to sort things intelligently based on columns and, and, and information to give you just what you want. More about that later. So for every item, we have a due date, an actual completion date. Hmm, anybody thought, why would I have two dates? Why would I have a due date and an actual completion date? Things happen. <laughs> yeah, when did it actually happen, right? And this is really important, and I, when, I, when I have the kickoff meeting and I show this to the teams, I emphasize this point. You will have a due date, but I will also record when it's complete. And I don't mean that as a threat. I simply mean that as a reality check. A lot of this whole process and a lot of what SharePoint about is about is capturing everything that happens. Again, not in a punitive manner, but in a way to make sure that everybody knows that we are have a method for this and you will be rewarded because maybe that completion date will be sooner, but also we'll know about it if it doesn't come sooner. <laughs> uh, here are three here. Assigned supervisor, assigned staff, and backup staff. Hmm. Well, I put them in this particular order for a reason. A lot of times these items in this list fall down to actual items of work. Like someone's gonna, if it's our Oingo Boingo example, someone's gonna have to rent a van, right? Someone's gonna have to rent a van in Chicago to get the gear around, right? And we're gonna assign that job to Lyle, for example, okay? Lyle is gonna have to rent the van. Well, we wanna know three things about Lyle. We wanna know who Lyle is. We also wanna know if there's a backup. Like what if Lyle sick? What if Lyle quits? What if Lyle, well, for whatever reason, we spent too much time with the band the last night and just is incapacitated, right? Okay, so we always wanna backup. And then this one over here, the assigned supervisor. Now I have a very particular reason for adding the supervisor piece to it. For one thing, I'm a project manager, that means I have no power. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a worker being in this organization. If I go over to someone, if I go over to Lyle, and it, Lyle, Lyle, the van, did you get the van? He's gonna brush me off, what, who am I, right? I'm not even in his unit, right? What, who, who, what does he care? But Lyle reports to Jacob, okay? And he listens to Jacob, 
right? So if I don't know who Jacob is, I can go to Jacob if I'm not getting motion out of Lyle. Clearly, right, you can see the hierarchy there, but as a PM myself, what I typically do with, my really, with really busy teams is I use the supervisor as my first point of contact. I always go to the supervisor and say, can you tell me the sta sta status of Lyle? How's Lyle doing with that van? And that does two things. That causes the supervisor to make sure they're always up to speed on what Lyle's up to, or Lyle's up to, and it also gives me uh, someone to be muscle to get Lyle to do his job, right? Okay, so let's do a first one, right? So the pre-project evaluation phase, for, and SharePoint uses this concept of lists, Lists are everywhere, right? Everything is a list. And behind this facade right here is a list. And we're gonna open one of those list items right here. I'm gonna click on it, you can see it's a hyperlink. Oh, watch this. Before I do that, see this three, the three ellipses here? I can click on that and I can say, add to timeline, which will then plug this item up here on the timeline. And let's do that. Now brace yourself, it's exciting. Oh, the site says, make sure your tasks have dates to add them to the timeline. Okay, not so exciting. <laughs> okay, so it's, SharePoint is smart. It's saying, how do you expect me to plug something on a timeline if you don't give me any dates, right? So, okay, we have to add some dates. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna click on this item now, and that's going to open it. Think of now of opening a file cabinet and pulling out a manila folder, and we're gonna start putting some information in it. This is the item right here. And we're going to have to put it in edit mode. So let's click over here on edit item. Okay, this is step one, business case. That's the title. So the business case, as I mentioned before, this is a part of the phase project charter where we identify the problem we need to solve. I'll be talking about that in the Thursday class what the business case is, and we'll be actually working on a business case. It's a lot of fun, actually, because we actually get to brainstorm. In this case, we'd be, we would be sitting down and asking the members of Oingo Boingo, tell us what you want to do. And they would say, well, we want to tour the world. And say, okay, well, don't, more specifically, how many countries, how many, what's, your, what's your dates, you know, how many songs are you going to be doing, what size team do you want, tell us your goals, right? We take that information back, and we put that into you know, English format, language, in a nice document that says, this is what Oingo Boingo wants to do, right? More than, and there's more to it than that. Now we're gonna ta assign this task to ourselves and we're gonna say we're gonna start that tomorrow on the 19th. That's the start date. And we're gonna give ourselves, now I know this takes time. This takes like, if you, have a t if you really work hard at this on a good business case, you can take six to eight hours, a full day at least of work to work to make a good business case. But if you make a really good business case, that's gonna be the grease for their whole project. You're gonna slide right through this whole project because you'll always have an answer. So here we go, I'm gonna say I'm gonna give myself a week. I'm gonna give myself a week and a day to the 26th. Hey, now we've got a start and a due date and we're at 0% complete. I don't always use the percentage complete, but some people will give me percentages and I will use that. It's funny, sometimes people will give me decimal points. I'm 46.3% complete. <laughs> they go, ah, you're an application developer, huh? Because they, de they wrote some personal app that keeps their own schedule and tells them they're 43.2. <laughs> now, a description. We're gonna write a verbal description. Um, prepare, review, and finalize the project business case. That's all it is, right? I'm just describing that. If there are associated tasks, I can add them in and that links tasks together. There are no associated tasks. Down here I can say the status for this is open. There's only two options, open and done. That's all you got, okay? And there'll be color coordination. And I'm going to put a comment in here. Um, assign, assigned uh, start and due dates. Now I know I'm not putting my name in there. I'm not putting a date and time stamp, and you'll see why in just a second. Actual completion date? Well, we don't know. And I'm going to assign this to myself. Hey, look at that. It goes into Active Directory and finds me. So there I am, little old me, right? And I'm going to uh, assign a Juan as my supervisor right there. And for backup, I'm going to assign my brother. There we go because he's at the county too. <laughs> so I've just assigned the three of us, right? So we've got all the people that I need. And then look at this, there's a link, I already added that in there. That's a link to the document itself. 
Now, that's all you get. And I'm gonna now click on save. And watch how this changes. So now we have the date, due date, assigned supervisor, assigned staff, and the backup staff. Okay, no actual completion date. Hey, what can we do now that we couldn't do before? Add it to the timeline. Let's go ahead and say add to timeline. And there we go. The whole project is one thing, <laughs> right? Because the project only shows you what you've got on the timeline. So it looks like that's the only thing. The project starts on 619 and it ends on 626. <laughs> okay, we know that there'll be more than that to it, right? So what I, actually, I could actually do is have the pre-project evaluation phase. Let's go into that and do something with that. So again, go into edit mode. And I'm gonna say that the pre-project evaluation phase actually begins today. And we're gonna have, for the pre-project evaluation phase, we're gonna have to do the business case and the project proposal, and then the evaluation at the end. I think we're gonna need a month to do that. So we're gonna go out to August, let's give ourselves to the August, to July 16th, okay? And I say, and we're going to say uh, complete project business, business case and project proposal. And you'll notice those are capitalized because those are proper items within the phase project charter. And I'm going to say the status of this is open. Again, this is assigned to me. Juan is going to keep me honest. And you go see Lyle if I'm not around, okay? okay. All right. <laughs> All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on save on that. And now we've got two items that have that. Let's go ahead and apply that to the timeline. Now we have two items, right? We have a phase and we have an actual piece of work that is now associated with it. If we want to, we can kind of color code these a little bit too. We can click on this item right here and come right up here to um, this colored item. Let's pick a nice, how about a nice green? There we go. Back to browse. So we have our evaluation phase and one item of, of business. Now let's also lay in the project proposals work. Okay, well we're gonna open that up. Now, Actually, in fact, I'm going to go back. I'm going to back up a bit. Cancel because I did some. I did some. I forgot something. Okay. <clears throat> the business case is not typically filled out by the project manager. In our particular organization, and however you run your organization, we have forward-looking individuals in our organization that interface with the customers. You know what are they called here? The BRMs, right, so the BRMs. The BRMs are the ones that are sitting with the executives and hearing their complaints and their concerns and, oh, that sounds like something we might be able to help you with. They'll whip out the business case and start writing stuff down. They'll bring, the, their BRMs are responsible for the business case. So actually, I'm going to change this business case from me. I'm going to change that to, <coughs> I'm, I am giving my friend Hugh the role of a BRM. He doesn't have any backup, okay? So my, I'm not going to incriminate any actual BRMs in here because this is a public facing thing. I think Hugh is okay with me sharing his name. <laughs> so, um, so there's Hugh and, and Juan. No, you're sorry, you don't have oversight over Hugh. Okay, so Hugh's our guy. He's pretty much on his own doing this stuff. So now we are down to just Hugh is taking care of the business case, right? So now let's go back into the project proposal and that, now, it's the business case that comes into the organization and at the BRM's level and the management level, they look at that thing and they say, what is this gonna be? Is it gonna be a, a project, an initiative, or do we wait, wait until later and they decide it's gonna be a project? And now it goes on to the next stage. Here, we're gonna pick out the project managers. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say myself as the project manager. Juan is gonna keep me honest. And Lyle, just like when we were kids, he's got my back. Right. Oh, but what did I forget? Dates. 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 So let's look at this calendar. So I'm saying that I think we're going to need a, just about a month to do this. That gives us, I'm giving myself a week to do the business case. 
And believe me, the project proposal is more work than is more work than the business case. So I think if we give us right about out to, we're going to need to fit, do the finalization. Take one day to do that at the end. That'll be on like what is that? The fifteenth. Let's take a look at July. July fifteenth is a Monday. Good. So let's give ourselves till the twelfth. From how about from the twenty seventh until the twelfth to work on the proposal? How's that sound? So let's go down here under pro project proposal and keep me honest what did I say and we're not going to do any work on a Saturday okay we're going to say what did I say the 26 was the start so the 27th 27th because the next day right Correct. great and then and then finishing on what do we say Second. July 2nd 12th oh yeah because we're starting the next one on the Monday the on then we're at the the 15th is our review day. Great. And we're going to say we're not at 50% complete. And we're going to say um, identify and uh, communicate project options. Seek sponsor decision on which, on which option to option to choose. So Think about that for a moment. If we were going into a car lot and we were going to pick a car, we walk right up to the car dealer and we ask her, we, she, says, she says, welcome, welcome to the car lot. I said, what do you want, sir? And I said, well, I want to get a, I want to get a truck. You know, I want to get a truck that, you know, that has four wheel drive and I want, I want mats because I have dirty feet or dirty shoes. I'm out in the mud all the time and I got dogs and stuff like that. And I want to have an AM FM radio, right? And you think about that, you go back, talk to your fellow, you know, salespeople and they say, well, we can offer Kurt the Ford Ranger the F-150, or that's about it, right? Or maybe the 350, but 250, but he probably doesn't need that. So then you come back to me and you say, well, Kurt, we've thought about this. We've got three options here. You know, we're recommending the F-150 because of its size, its better value. That's what we're doing here. The business case is you hearing what I want. I want a truck, four wheel drive, and with floor mats, right? And then you go back and you think about the options that you have, and you come back with a recommendation after talking to the sales manager or something like that, right? That's what this means. Identify and communicate project options. So the BRM comes back to RCIT, talks to the, I, the experts here. We come up with some ideas, maybe three options, and say option number two is our recommended one, and communicate that, and the, the, sponsor, the customer selects one. I'm going to go down here. We've got all that, and we've got our dates. I think we're good. Click on Save. There we've got that. What can we do now? Timeline. Add it to the timeline. There we go. Hey, look at that. <coughs> wow, I gave myself more overall time. See, hmm, maybe I wasn't, what was I thinking there? Maybe, well, I have to ask myself, was this my real self, my real sense of reality speaking to me here? <laughs> Telling me it was going to take more time? And over here, was I, did I just make a mistake or was I, maybe I better, better add a few days there, okay? Let's do this. Let's add, what is that? That's the 12, oh, you know what that is? Da -da -da. It's the weekend, I think. Okay, let's go into the evaluation phase review and that's gonna be on Monday the 15th, right? Keep forgetting about those weekends. They do that to you. Okay, so start date is July 15th and the due date is July 15th. And we're gonna say the description, uh, perform, perform fa phase review and sign off. Okay, and uh, this is going again going to be me, Juan, and Lyle, and we'll click on save, and then we're going to go ahead and add that, and it should plug in nicely. It should fit in like a nice jigsaw puzzle. Okay, good. So, actually I forgot, I, I misspoke. Why does that appear like that instead of like the jigsaw puzzle that I thought it would be? This is correct, I was wrong. What, was, what, is, what is unique about this particular item versus these items? It's only one day. Yeah, it's one day. So it appears as a milestone rather than uh, a task, right? And there we go. And, there's, and that's on the 15th and it takes us to the 16th. Hey, it's starting to look like a little bit like a project, huh? Do you see how as we begin to build this thing out, 
it's gonna the jigsaw puzzle is gonna come together and we can we can move things around. Watch, I can take this, and move it up here if I want. Okay, well that doesn't look good. <laughs> Let's put it back down there. I can take this, and and you can see that uh, SharePoint's offering to help me out up here. Go away. <laughs> I can move this over here if I want. You can move anything anything you like, right? And let's put this back down here. Right, right there. And adjust it accordingly. And do you, do you see how the today is always lined up with today? Keeps us on us. We know exactly where we are. Do you have any questions at this point? We have uh, about 15 <coughs> minutes left. How would that evaluation phase appear for this two or three days? It would appear like these as well. It would be a, a, bar. Bar, a bar. Exactly. Right. Now, this is enough to get a project started, okay? If I was a project manager, I'd be very happy with this as I'd be, let's go. Roll the sleeves up a little further, okay? Because I have now laid out, you're falling behind <laughs> on, the, uh, on the sleeve rolling initiative. Um, here we go, because I now have laid out a solid month of work for myself, right? I know what I'm gonna do in terms of the business case. I know what I'm gonna do with the project proposal. You guys don't know anything about those things yet because I haven't shown those to you. Those are on the uh, Thursday lesson, but I am gonna show you really quick how those, where those documents live and how we link them into the tasks, okay? So I keep referring to this phased project charter document, which is the heart of every project. You don't have, a, just like in any business agreement, the heart of it is the contract. The phased project charter is the contract. Let's scroll over here to the document library. I'm gonna click on documents, and there's about four or five documents in there. Every project that we create for you comes with these documents. You'll recognize what some of these are right away. There's a business requirements. These are all templates. There's a business requirements template. There's the phase project charter. That's the one I keep referencing. Here's another phase project charter, but it says sample. We included that for a reason. This phase project charter for you is blank. It doesn't have anything in it. So you're like, what the heck is this? What do I do? So we included a sample from a real project that's been completed. So you can open that, that sample and compare it and see how a real project was laid out, all the content was laid out. Then we down here, we have something called the Project Closer Report Presentation. That's a PowerPoint presentation. That you, remember I told you about that last meeting? You get up in front of everybody and say, hold off, no, no, no drinks until we're done with the agreement, right? You know, oh, go, boy, go, take it easy. This is the presentation you give them. It's a PowerPoint. Then we have the play phase project report. That's the actual handout that you give them that corresponds to the presentation. Then we have the status report. We'll talk about that another time. That's a really important document. So this one right here is the phase project charter. And you can take any one of these and you can add documents. They simply go to upload, file, choose the file from your computer and dump it in here. Once you dump it into, into SharePoint, you can then go to the document and go to um, share and it will allow you to share the document. Let's, let's confuse my brother. Hi, let's say, hi Lyle. Here we go, hold on. Hi Lyle, here is a do document for you. Okay, Kurt. Okay, I won't actually send it to him. But what I could, I could do this. So if I could then send it to Lyle, you see how it knows who Lyle is. If I also wanted to add one as well, it's searching. Ugarte, did I pronounce? Yeah, there you are. Nice photo. There's one. I can add as many people as I like, right? And I can choose the permission level. I can give them different permissions level. Um, allow editing or not, right? Maybe it's just a view only document that I want them to see, okay? And then, when I, I think I'm, I hope that doesn't send it. There we go. Click on send and off it goes. I can also just grab the link. That's what I'm gonna do right here. Creating a shareable link. That means it truncates that link down as far as possible. And then I can copy that link and paste it anywhere. But SharePoint is really smart. Here I go, I can copy that link, okay? SharePoint is really smart. You remember as I started to share it and I started to item list every person that was getting it? SharePoint doesn't just use that to send to those people. It's going like this. It's going, okay, you want to send to Lyle and you want to send to one and you're giving them full privileges. Okay, here that goes. Okay, I'm going to remember this. So with Lyle and Juan then log into the system, SharePoint says, oh, you're Lyle? Oh, you got full privileges, have at it. 
You're one, you've got full privileges too. But if Lyle or Juan share that link with, you know, Hugh, he logs, he clicks on the link, it comes in, okay, Hugh, who, who the heck are you? you know, no, no document for you, okay? So it's very smart and clever that way, but be ready for that, okay? So you need to reshare it through SharePoint that way. Now we have just 11 minutes left. I'm gonna wrap up real quick. One of the things you can do when you grab the link, as I just did, is you can go back to your milestones into the business case. Now, I already did this, I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Way down here at the bottom, hyperlink. You can paste the link in here and give it a title. And now your milestone item hyper has a, includes a hyperlink to the thing that it refers to. So, and I don't need to do it, I'll click on cancel. So let's say for example, I actually wanted to review that document. Okay, I'm ready to get to work. I'm rolling my sleeves up past the elbows now. I'm gonna click on business case. Here we go, time to write up the business case. I'm gonna scroll on down. Um, there's the uh, link, where is the link? There it is right there. Phase project charter, I click on that. Guess what it's doing? It's going back to SharePoint, checking to see if it knows who I am, opening the document, and here it comes. I find it a little bit easier to actually open it and work. Now it's open in my browser right now. Okay, that means it can be collaboratively edited. Hugh, Lyle, Juan, and I can all be in this document at the same time. And you'll see a little list over here of all the other people that are in there. It's really fun sometimes. You can be typing away and you see somebody typing just above you. I'm sure you've all done this. All the kids are doing it. You know, uh, my, my daughter, you know, I went to buy her a computer and sometime back and she said, how much memory do you want? And, and her computer said, memory? What do I need memory for? And she's, the, the idea of storing anything on your computer is the thing of the past. She's a teenager, right? She, her idea is that everything is in Google Docs, right? And of course, she writes her documents. She does her homework with all of her buddies. They're all collaborating. We can do that too. Now, you can also, the, the web browser's features are not as rich as the local word that you have. You can click on open in Word and it takes just a second and it will open in Microsoft Word and, you can, and it will then take any changes you do and save them back automatically. It'll open in just a second and then we'll be just about ready to wrap up. <clears throat> okay, here is the document, the aforementioned phase project charter. The heart of every project that's run using this methodology. Scrolling right on down, the yellow, we put this in, these are just instructions that tell you what this is. You can, you can remove, the, like Visine, take the, no, that's the red out, right? Yeah. yeah, you can take the yellow out after you complete that. So just go ahead and type in your agency name, proposed project, proposal name, whatever the case may be. Here's your change log, you know, all the things you're doing. Scroll on down a little farther. Go ahead and type in the BRM and the PM names right there. Remember I told you there are three sections, the business case, the project proposal, and the project plan. The document has all three phases here. And scroll in a little further, and here's the business case, and the first page is the template guide, tells you how to use this thing. Remember you also have a completed business a phase project charter you can refer to. Scroll in down, here's a definition of a project, because some people say, what is a project? So it's defined. <laughs> And then down into it, and this is the part, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but this is the part that you sit, as the BRM sits, would talk to the customer, Blanco, Blanco, tell me about this 2020 dream to tour the world. You tell me all those details, we capture it here in the document, we, I turn the computer around, and I say, is this what you mean? And they look at it, and they go, yeah, that's exactly what we mean. We did a good job, because we accurately captured what they want us to do. That, half the battle is won if we can do just that one thing, right? How many times have we completed a project and the customer says, yeah, but not quite. It's not quite what I was after. Or someone shows up later and says, you didn't ask me, right? So. And then with that, are there any questions? I'm just gonna finish with one more thing and this is a segue into our next lesson. This lesson here was project timeline and milestones. When I'm all done with this lesson, I'm gonna render this video, I'll throw it out on the net, I'll hyperlink it here. You can always come back and see it if you like, as you can go look at the previous lessons as well. The very next lesson is called Project Notebook. That'll be next Tuesday. And you're going to have a moment of deja vu here. Deja vu all over again, as they say. So let's close that. And I want you to just, oh, oh, I wanted to show you something. We're not looking at the homepage, are we? 
Remember what was on the what was on the home page before? Nothing. It was blank, right? Let's click on the home page. It's no longer blank. But look at this. The home page only shows the work that we've laid out for ourselves. It doesn't confuse the customer with all of the extraneous details that are yet to come. And watch this. Watch what happens when we complete an item of work. Let's say we finish the business case. Bye-bye. And it disappears from the list, right? But wait, 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 we're not done with that thing. So <laughs> where do we have to go to find that thing and undo that? Milestones. Yeah, back, back to milestones. Undo that checklist, check mark. We're not done with you. Go back to home and it's back again. But notice that when I, I should have lingered for a second, it doesn't remove it from the timeline. The finished work remains on the timeline, but we can pull it off if we want. We can easily take it off, just simply go over here and say, remove from timeline, get out of here, and it's gone, right? So uh, project managers tend to use the timeline to their advantage, really busy project with lots of stuff going on. People put stuff up there that's only relevant to the here and now and pull it off later. Simple projects leave everything up and it tells a nice story 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 keep that word in your mind in the future lessons you're going to hear me say that over and over again story 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 if you remove it from the home page will it also be removed on the milestones yes okay, so yeah so last thing we have five minutes i'm going to finish with one thing go back over here to our milestones use your photographic memories to look out one two three four main phases ten steps Okay, the next lesson is going to talk about this thing, the notebook. Every project comes with its own OneNote notebook. I'm going to go ahead and open that up in another tab. Takes just a second to load. This is where you keep track of every meeting that you have for all of your projects. And we've, create, we've loaded it with a template in here for your meetings. Don't worry, we're going to help you figure out how to run your meetings as well. And that's really important. That's a big part of this. Because when you get really up and rolling with this and you figure out how to do this, meetings become fun. Because you're in control, you're guiding the team along, they know that you're out, you've got the wheel, and it really makes things productive. And people keep coming back. So, scroll on down just a little bit. And I'll, I'll talk about these at the next lesson, what all this stuff is. But what is that? Are you having deja vu moment? It's the same phases and the same 10 steps. And if you click on any one of these, it opens up that particular item, okay? What this allows us to do is to have a shortcut to the project story, there's that word, the project story, in the meeting. We build the project out of the story. Every, if we're building a Frankenstein monster, you start with a skeleton and you start fleshing the body out. Is that gross? <laughs> Maybe that's not how it goes. Okay, <laughs> but here you have these 10 steps. As you begin adding work to it, you begin adding items in here. These items can be action items, decisions, changes, risks, communications, and the project story begins to flesh out and be told. And if you attend that first, that very first training that I did, we showed actual examples of projects and I showed you real ones where you saw the project stories and you were like, oh my gosh, what a mess. How can I ever do that? You can do that because you start like this. And because it's your story, you know everything in that story. And I'll leave you that as a sampler. That's what we're going to see next Tuesday. You're going to learn how to use the notebook as the heart and soul of your project. Are there any questions? Well, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and close then. You'll have four minutes to finish your lunch if you didn't, hard, if you didn't bring your lunch with you. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody for coming and those of you online as well. If, you have, if there's some folks still out there on Skype. Yeah, uh, Keisha, thank you so much for joining us and I hope we see you again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining as well.